Welcome to this brief presentation about the CTF mode in the European Cybersecurity Challenge 2015. The European Cybersecurity Challenge is a competition with Switzerland, Romania, Austria, Spain, United Kingdom and Germany. All these countries did a pre-qualifying event and found out or identified 10 young cybersecurity specialists that will come together on the 21st of October in Lucerne, Switzerland to run the European Cybersecurity Competition. In order to give a better understanding for the teams about the infrastructure they will find uh, in Lucerne, we have prepared this uh, introductional video. So in Lucerne, there will be a one core switch and every team will get their own individual team ESX server. So team Spain, UK, Germany, Austria and so forth will get an individual ESX infrastructure that belongs to a team. The core switch is then connected to an internet router and so teams have free internet access to Google to search the internet or to read the challenges in the Hacking Lab platform. The internet router on premise in Lucerne is then connected to the internet or to the router on site in the Hacking Lab or remotely to the Hacking Lab uh, vulnerable server network. The on-premise internet router is then connected throughout the VPN connection to the remote router uh, of the Hacking Lab infrastructure, where we have the vulnerable a a Hacking Lab uh, server infrastructure. This is uh, referred as the legacy server infrastructure. On top of that, teams will find a production server network for the CTF uh, game. Every team needs to run an application on their own ESX server locally on premise and on the production server. The application is identical, so it is uh, a clone uh, of the application. Second team has an application on their ESX as well and on the production server. And the third team as well, and all fifth, fourth, fifth and sixth. Teams will have vSphere access to their local ESX server. So let's say you have root access locally on your team server, but teams will not get interactive access to the servers on the production. No SSH, root or any access you have, teams have on the production server. There will be a shared infrastructure. The shared infrastructure includes a Git repository server and the Jenkins build server and the bot and some more systems that are not important right now. When it comes <clears throat> to the client, they will be connected throughout Wi-Fi to their local ESX server. Every team is responsible for setting up their own private Wi-Fi. From a wire firewalling perspective, from the client land to the other client land, traffic is not routed or firewalled. Except of the client-to-client -client network connectivity, everything else is open. And this is not allowed during the competition to block other teams from accessing, for example, Team Server 1 or Team Server 2 on-site on the ESX server. This must be kept open for everyone. Let's do an example of an attacking scenario. Let's say team three wants to attack team one. They have the option to attack the ESX application on the ESX server, or to attack the same identical application on site. When it comes to defense, the teams have access to a Git repository. So we have, a, in, in total, we have 21 different Git repositories and team one has an exclusive individual Git repository for their own application. 
the own repositories are not uh, accessible or accessible but not uh, no access privileges for the other teams so it's only for team one and team two and so forth private git repos if you like so if the team wants to change or fix vulnerabilities in the given web app or app or service they need to push changes to the git repository where the Jenkins build server will take the changes build the application and provide the changes back to the client ESX server on premise in Lucerne or to the production server that's uh, in the shared or remote hacking lab infrastructure. That's how teams can apply changes to their applications. The scoring bot is counting uptime and other score related tasks like if the vulnerability is still available and so forth on the ESX server that runs locally on site plus against the production server. If Team 1 uh, could uh, successfully hack into Team Server 1 um, web app or server, they will get a gold nugget. They copy the gold nugget down to the local computer and register the gold nugget to the scorebot. So the next time the scorebot is doing uh, checks against Team Server 1, the points will be inherited by team 3 because they have the gold nugget of team 1 and team 1 will not get any points. So team 1 uh, needs then to change the gold nugget. The gold nugget is also hosted in the git repository. As an anti-cheating mechanism uh, it is not allowed to change the gold nugget every second or write a script that changes the gold nugget in the git repository every second. So whenever you commit or push a change in a Git repository uh, that is related to the gold nugget, uh, you will uh, get a penalty and delay points in time. Uh, if you push changes to the, your source code of your vulnerable app application, there's no penalty. You can do it as often as you like. It's not only Git, uh, sorry, gold nugget related. We still have the mission style, Jeopardy style challenges in Hacking Lab. So there are still are vulnerable servers, not related to a dedicated team, shared servers if you like. You need you can attack them as well. If there is a application that has a specific timing issue, uh, then every team has an attack server on the server network. You can then connect to your team server and do your scanning from there to the vulnerable server. This should save bandwidth. So if it is not uh, should not be scanned throughout Nmap or uh, Bust or Diabuster or any scanning tool throughout the VPN network. So if you need to scan something, please access uh, your team server. You have root. Every team has its own team server. And you have root access on it, and you can install stuff. Uh, you do it from there, so that we can make sure that the VPN will not uh, will be available throughout the whole competition. Let's so summarize what you have heard. Please make yourself familiar with Git. Please be aware that we may rever uh, revert to snapshot certain servers. So that means your uh, Git repo could either beyond beyond or before or after the server git so make sure that you know how to uh, to clean up your git repo if you are behind or above, uh, uh, before the, the timing of your git repository plus you should uh, download the free ESXi uh, server and play around with your vSphere clients make sure that you know how to to re create snapshots or to snapshot and doing all the vSphere administrative tasks. There will be a proxy infrastructure on your on every team server locally. So make sure that you are familiar with proxifying uh, HTTP, HTTPS traffic. Uh, we will not name the, the programming languages right now, but please make sure that you are familiar with uh, common uh, programming languages that you need to fix the vulnerabilities. When it comes to the scoring, we have the legacy scoring board 
from that we had since years. The scoring bot is uh, counting uh, uptime and, and vulnerabilities. Plus, at the end of the competition, teams need or must uh, give a presentation in front of the conference audience of the Swiss Cyberstorm conference on the 21st of October. So teams will have access to the scoring <coughs> that uh, is uh, provided by the legacy system. This is public. Um, the scoring of the jury or the given points, the grading by the jury is uh, private, kept private. Uh, and you will have some insight about the scoring bot. But in, to summarize, uh, the final scoring and who, who if there's um, little distance between in the points between the first and the second after the hacking part, you may not know who exactly won the competition. We will travel from Lucerne to, to Bern, the capital of Switzerland, on 22nd of October. Uh, we'll do the award ceremony uh, there, and there you will find out or the, the during our, throughout the award ceremony who was the winner of the European Cybersecurity Challenge 2015. Thank you for listening and watching. Um, if you have any questions, please email me on e1 at hackingmanuslab.com. Cheers.